this set up over here. Okay, I'm sitting here with Greg Hafen, the second, and he's a candidate for Assembly District 36, which covers uh, Nye County, parts of Clark County, and Lincoln County, I believe, doesn't it? Yeah, part You have half the state. Well, it's it's only half of Nye County. It's not all of Nye County. Assemblywoman uh, Alexis Hansen has Tonopah North. I yeah, have Tonopah true. South. So. Yeah, but that's still a large area. It is. I actually had to buy new tires for my truck because I've been driving uh, all over this great state. Now, I know a little bit about you guys because you're like 19th generation Nevada, aren't you? Well, I'm, I'm fifth I generation, uh, but not only not only Nevadan, but I'm a fifth generation rural Nevadan. Okay. I come from a long, long line of uh, farmers and ranchers, um, and I, I take pride in our rural lifestyle. Well, I'm glad you say that because, you know, we're sitting here right now in Prop, Nevada, which, according to the state uh, guy that was by the county commissioners a couple of meetings ago, we are known as primitive, not even rural. That's how they've designated us. We're primitive. But in some sense, uh, Greg, that is true out uh, here. We are very self-reliant and dependent upon the resources, which conflicts with the metro area that's just over the hill here. So, well, and you know, Dwight, I appreciate you bringing that up because I actually spent a lot of the session last year um, discussing that and, and and trying to explain to the the Las Vegas uh, assembly members and some of the Senate members that the contrast that we have between Las Vegas and, and all of rural Nevada, really, um, and and that became a priority of mine because I realized how much. They didn't understand that. They didn't understand how our lifestyle is. I mean, we don't have a movie theater here. So we, we have different priorities than, than they have, and, and I I think I was successful in explaining that to at least the Republicans. Um, some of the Democrats would listen. Some of the Democrats had their, their national agenda that they were pushing, uh, and they, they didn't want to hear anything. Uh, which is disappointing. They, they shouldn't be looking at the national level. They, this is Nevada. They should be looking at what's most important for for well, us. Yeah, well, I've ran into that in testifying on water bills uh, at the state legislature when I would have a legislator, you know, bring me up to speed here. I, they, they were saying, we don't understand. I, you know, he was given an honest answer. He's never been out here where you're dependent upon water. And that, uh, and that, was, that was very frustrating because... It was, it, all the water bills were, were were very partisan, at least the ones that affected us. I know Senator Gokachia had a, a bill that wasn't, um, but the water bills that really affected our community were hyper-partisan, and um, the only bipartisanship that we had is I had a couple Democrats vote no on the Senate side, which was surprising. Um, but that goes to show you that I was able to reach out across the lines. We, I, I'd like to repeal that. I think it was a horrible bill. Um, we didn't want it out here. The, the, who, who wanted it? Who was the one pushing it? The, well, the, the Democrats is, from the center of Las Vegas? I mean, that didn't make any sense. This is a mystery, isn't it? We don't really know some of these, uh, the answers to these questions, but un it's, it's really we're underrepresented here in rural Nevada for what we represent to the state. And um, let, let's take an, an issue, for instance, health care. Now, if I want to go to a real hospital, I have to go to Las Vegas to a hospital. There's people in your district that don't even have a hospital. And what what is your you know what kind of efforts have you made, or are you going to look forward to in trying to bring uh, reliable health care like hospitals and clinics to uh, our our area, your rural Nevada. So, uh, great question. Um, I'm very thankful to have Desert View Hospital. I know they're not, you know, the large scale hospitals like they have in Las Vegas, but they uh, were purchased by the Valley mm -hmm. uh, Health System from Las Vegas. Um, and they're able to do a lot for our community. And what they can't do, the least they can stabilize us and then transport us into Las Vegas to, to get those things, um, those services that we need. So I'm very thankful to have them here and, and the level that they brought in. Um, uh, ER quality doctors now just recently um, to try and improve the, the health care that we have in Pahrump. Um, one of the things that I'm actually working on right now is I'm chairing the uh, Southern Nevada Regional Behavioral Health Board 
uh, which was newly formed, and so we're, we're trying to get that up and, and running to discuss the behavioral health issues. Uh, Pahrump actually got sucked into the Clark County Board, so I'm, I'm working on the stuff out in, in Caliente and Hawthorne and, and across our state um, in the rural aspects, um, which is important. I mean, because we don't have medical facilities, the, the Tonopah Hospital closed, we don't have that any longer. Uh, so, you know, for a lot of them, it's a four hour drive to, to get to to get to medical uh, needs and so we are we are looking at that um, our first priority with that board is to get it established get all of our board members appointed uh, and we have been participating with the other um, behavioral health boards and, and hearing where their issues are and what they're looking at doing because they're still dealing with obviously their their own issues as well well you sit on the board as I understand it here at our own little hospital here is that correct I do what do you are you aware of any uh, plans that they have for this coronavirus that's going on? It, it, has they been? What kind? Of, I guess what I'm so, saying is what kind of uh, great great question. You know, um, earlier today, I was actually speaking about that to, to the, everyone at the senior center. Um, the hospital's actually been very proactive. Uh, two weeks ago, they started going. Hey. You know, we need to look at this because it's starting to, to come up. We need to get our processes and procedures put into place. Um, they had to determine how they were going to get all of the, the testing kits into Las Vegas um, because it's, it's, it's all got to go to the state lab to be tested. They, they set all those things up. They really took a proactive approach. Um, being that I am the chair of that board, they asked me to come in last Monday to do a safety meeting. Um, they're doing those, they're meeting multiple times per day to do updates on not only what's going on in the hospital, but, but what's going on in the state, what's going on at a national level to, to ensure um, that A, they're prepared if something were to happen and knock on wood, nothing has happened. So uh, we're, we're sitting in a good uh, good position right now and I, I believe that they've really gone and, and set up the procedures and the policies and procedures that need to be in place uh, to ensure it does not become an epidemic here. Right. Okay, switching gears here. You know that Yucca Mountain has been a major issue here in Nevada because people believe that it was stuck down the Nevadans' throats way back when. Um, just give some thoughts because I've, I've talked to people that say maybe we what we should be doing is uh, uh, taking the nuclear waste but reprocessing it, maybe get some type of a plant for reprocessing rather than just storing it, why throw away perfectly good uh, uranium. But I was wondering what you're, because you know, you live here where I do, and you've heard the, you know, the fears of a lot of people, whether they're founded or not, about having that story there, but it's more of a political issue than really a scientific issue, I think. Well, what are your thoughts about about this Yakima question? Well, well you're right. It, it's become more of a political hot potato than a scientific um, thing. And, and I firmly believe that the science should move forward and we should look at what can be done at Yakima. If nuclear waste is not an option, uh, we need to be doing something else with it or closing it up and stop spending our time effort and, and political energy just even discussing it. Uh, and I agree with you that we should be looking at reprocessing our nuclear waste on a national level. I know I'm aware of a few ideas and things that have been coming out, it's slightly cost prohibitive right now, uh, but they're developing some sort of battery and some sort of generators with the reprocessed uh, material. Um, and I think it's better to reprocess and reuse um, in a safe and efficient manner. I, I mean, safety's got to be number one. Right. That's why I think that the science needs to be done first before we, we really move forward with anything. Um, I, and on that note, I'm actually on the um, interim committee on nuclear waste. So we're actually going out to the, the test site next week to meet with them, discuss what they're doing over there, um, and kind of get a better understanding of where we're headed with all of this. How about transportation? You know, out here, in the wilds out here, uh, the road situation, we, we, I don't think we get the funding that we really deserve since we are really the transient area between Las Vegas and uh, Reno, the other major population center. Uh, what kind of efforts have you worked for or, or would you be considering going forward about transportation? Um, rural Nevada. So, so two things. Um, one of uh, which I, what I did in the session was, is I, is I argued that um, 
Nye County gets lumped into Clark County's prevailing wages. But as you and I know, the wages in Nye County are less than they are in Las exactly. Vegas. And so I argued that we should no longer be required to fall into the Las Vegas prevailing wages. And in addition to that, um, we actually get stuck with a premium because there's this called a zone adder to the prevailing wage if you're more than, I think, 55 miles from Las Vegas City Hall. Well, why does Las Vegas City Hall have anything to do with work that's being done out here? I don't know. And so I, I, I argue that the rural counties should not be, A, lumped into the Las Vegas prevailing wage, and B, we shouldn't, if we're going to be a statewide prevailing wage, then the rural county should not be subject to a zone header that is being located out of Las Vegas. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't cost more money for our local contractors to repair a road than it does Las Vegas. I mean, it, it, is it really 20% more? No, it's not. No, it is. We can normally do things cheaper out here than they can do it in Las Vegas. Which we need. Right. And so that was one thing that I actually I argued in the session. Obviously, being a, in the super minority, um, the Democrats didn't really, really have to listen to anything right. we had to say. Um, and then also on that note, I'm actually co-chairing the. Um, Transportation and Infrastructure uh, Committee for the Southern Nevada Forum during this interim session. And we're actually, one of the, the topics that's come up is transportation in um, the rural parts of the state and how we're going to address um, those issues. We've only gotten to the point where we've, we've thrown out all the different ideas and we've categorized them in different areas um, because we didn't want to duplicate work. There are some other interim committees that are looking at certain things. We didn't want to overlap them. So now we've condensed our list. Uh, I think our next meeting is in two weeks. Um, so th those are things that we're actively looking at during this interim uh, time frame. And um, it's kind of an honor to be one of the co-chairs on that to, to get the input. And if you have some input, Dwight, you got my phone number, call me, let me know. Right. Why don't, you, why don't you give your phone number out so uh, people can get in touch with you uh, that might want to talk to you about? Absolutely. Um, so they can call me at my office. The number is 775-727-1629. Uh, or you can go to my website, uh, www.hafen4 Nevada, and that's H-A-F-E-N, the number four, and Nevada.com. Okay, one other, one other uh, you know, this one of the hot points that uh, came up with the last uh, actually, the, yeah, your predecessor was the signing the t t tax pledge that I think it was Grover Northwest has come out with where people running for office swear that they will never vote for a tax bill. What's your position on that? So, I don't believe the state needs additional taxes. Um, I don't see any reason why, the, you know, they got two tax positions or ballot petitions that are going around to fund quote unquote fund education is 1.3 billion dollars. There's absolutely no need for that. There's no accountability, there's no transparency. Where's that money going? Right now the teachers are making like fifty five, sixty thousand dollars a year, but we're giving them over ten thousand dollars per student. So that's like three hundred thousand dollars per classroom. When well, the teachers are getting let's say sixty, where's that other two hundred and forty thousand dollars going? Where's the accountability for the money? And I don't foresee a reason why we need to increase our taxes. We should be looking at ways to redu reduce the cost burden instead of increasing the cost burden. Like I was explaining with the prevailing wage and the zone editor, there's a common sense answer to reduce the cost of building these roads, but for some reason nobody wants to listen to common sense. Right. Um, hopefully we can, we can win this state back and we can change that mentality um, and that is that is definitely one of my goals. So. Okay, well, I want to switch over to water again, which again one of our most important issues here. You chaired the uh, the uh, I guess you'd have to call it a subcommittee here in Pahrump for dealing with Basin 162 water, the water plan that was uh, debated back and forth for a number of, of uh, meet uh, quite a few meetings and sort of cobbled together. But that doesn't mean that we've solved the problem. And according to the pumpage figures, here in Base 162, we're getting pretty close to the recharge where it would be balanced out, where the amount of water coming in would be equal to the amount of water going out. And there's contingencies here that, you know, 
we don't want any meters on our wells. We want to protect our domestic wells. And then, of course, you've got the, you know, the dragon out here, the growth, because the population of the world's getting larger, the population of Southern Nevada is getting larger, and people are moving over from Las Vegas, retiring, because why? Because we have a much better lifestyle. I, I shouldn't have just said that. I don't want anybody listening to this and come moving over here. But, but so, you're right. We do have a better you know, lifestyle. Then we had, a set, we had uh, the state engineer came in with the order 1293, amended 1293A. Then we have the AB uh, 95. What, how do we as reasonable people here in Pahrump solve our water problem here? without a state engineer involved, without the legislature involved, what would you propose, what would you work towards going forward? That was a big talk. No, and, and you actually, I think you answered your own question, that we need to do it locally. It should not be the state engineer telling us how to solve our problem. Um, I, I think that we've done a lot in this community. Um, I still am a firm believer that domestic wells should be left alone. There should never be a meter put on a domestic well. Um, and the guys that are here now with domestic wells should not be touched. Uh, I'm a firm believer in that. I fought for that up in the session. And I, I plan to continue to, to fight for that. Well, a lot of people would think because you and your fa you work for a, a utility company here, that in some way that would reflect that, no, I'm all pro uh, hooking sewers up to everybody and water up to everybody. But you stated right off the bat you're for rural Nevada. And th just the infrastructure alone, I think, makes it untenable to run pipes all over this spread out valley here. But I'm glad you I'm glad you hit that. You you know, you won't make any efforts to try to change the rural uh, lifestyle here. Uh, well, and if I could, Dwight, I, uh, we kind of have a business model. We look at it like direct TV. If you want service, if you want satellite, sign up for service. If you don't, you have other options. You can you can have your own well. You can have your own septic, and that's the that's the beauty of of Pahrump and, and our, our community. Yeah. Here is, is you have the different options. If you if you want to live on an acre and a quarter, or you know, my, my dream is ten acres. I'm, I'm working towards it. I'd love to do that. My son loves horses. I want to I want to have right. horses again. I haven't had horses in a few years, so um, I want to do that. Um, They're hay burners, you know. I you know. <laughs> okay, one final question, Jobs. I, since I've lived here now, I've retired, but it doesn't affect me as much as it does your son. You just mentioned your son. How does a person keep their kids here uh, that we've educated and spent money raising and then keep them from fleeing the brain drain out of our valley here? What, what, do you, what kind of ideas do you have on jobs? So, um, great question. One of the things I actually did this last session was I carried a bill for workforce development and trying to... Um, expose our children to uh, different fields that we have. Um, I wasn't very successful, obviously, rookie in the super minority, so that bill did not go forward. Um, but here locally, we've actually implemented a lot of that already without having to have state law to require it. I wanted it to go across the entire state, but we've actually done a great job um, where, we, where our schools are bringing the kids out. They're going to different um, workplaces to expose the children to, to what different fields they are. I mean, look, you can become a, a line a linesman at Valley Electric, great paying jobs, uh, and, and there's a lot of, of the tech industry, not the tech, but the, you know, the technical blue collar work. There's great paying jobs that'll be here for generations to come, and, um, and we need them. I mean, we need more people to, to fill these. Uh, we'll always need somebody to, to fix plumbing, and, um, Exactly. We'll always need power. Yeah, there was a cartoon, or not it was a cartoon, it was a picture and it showed a guy in a utility hat disconnecting a person's power meter. Did you see that? Uh, you, you, posted it on, you reposted it on Facebook and I saw that. I thought it was funny. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> well, for the listeners out there, it, it basically it boiled down to that kids are going off to college taking out huge student loans and they end up working at McDonald's in a sense because nobody needs their history degree or their philosophy degree whereas a young man or woman that looks at an alternative goes to a trade school gets an apprenticeship uh, working well for a utility company or something 
and they're the ones making the money, and these other people are the ones serving them burgers. But anyway, that's that's kind of it. Hey, Greg, Dwight, good, good luck to see on you. the campaign I trail appreciate here. it. Uh, and, uh, if I could just uh, remind all your listeners, get out and vote June 9th. Exactly. I would greatly vote. appreciate the, uh, the support to go back up to Carson City. Yeah. Yeah, you people, if you don't vote, you have nobody to complain about but yourself. That's it. Dwight Lilly here, signing off. Thank you, Dwight.